Welcome Ringside Collectibles fans. Welcome Wrestling Figs. We're here at Ringside Fest at home. Uh, it's an exciting event. We know we can't be in person this year. It's unfortunate, uh, but we have some really exciting news. I've got Bill McKenna and Steve Ozer from the Mattel team here, but we have, guys, I don't mean to move past you quickly, but we have a really special guest here. Uh, Keith Lee is on the line with us. Keith, how are you doing today? Well, I'm quite fantastic and happy to be here. I don't think we're moving past them too fast. I think people are quite aware how special these events are. They are very special. They are very special. But you're very special too. And now that we're all, we can all be special together, uh, we got some magical reveals coming up. Uh, and I, what I want to do is uh, I want to show you some of these figures first thing. Uh, so we've got the Street Profits here uh, on the screen. Right, Steve? And we, we've also got Bianca Belair and what looks like Mae Young. Uh, Keith, any immediate reactions to these figures? Uh, yeah, I mean, clearly these figures, all of them want the smoke, and that includes Mae Young, because <laughs> the monster. So yeah, I'm, I'm in love with this. I gotta have that Bianca Belair without question. They would, for, for some reason, it's just the perfect mix-up of talent right here. I feel like if, if uh, the Street Profits and Mae Young were in the same era, there's no way they wouldn't have interacted. <laughs> the amount of dancing that would happen would be absurd, no less. And then so, Bianca Belair, of course, with that, uh, that long, long uh, ponytail there, just uh, looking, looking as, as unique as she can get. Oh, yeah. Great she stuff will also here. have a uh, soft good jacket, too, that matches the gear. Uh, it's not seen here, but when it's seen on the figure, it's going to look uh, even better. It came out oh. really, really well. That's awesome. Uh, all right, so amazing stuff in Elite 81, as we've seen. But up next in Elite 82... Something very exciting. The oh. first time Elite oh. Keith Lee figure. And not only do you get one figure, you get two because you're the chase in this wave. So you get a deco chase, which every, every collector is going to go crazy trying to, to hunt down that exclusive white gear chase version. Wow. Um, Ooh, that's awesome. all do, you, do you want to tell Keith about his figure? Sure. I have the... Uh, sample here which i'm not let's see if we can put off the side so it's not in front of my big fat head uh it's the uh, you know it's got the, the the black gear with the baskin baskin my glory um deco on the front and the pose on the uh on the front of the jacket and then interchangeable hands so you can do the signature entrance pose with the uh the, the raised thumb yeah so um this was a lot of fun to be able to, to capture the you know the exact pose with the interchangeable hands um, on the figure, and then the uh, the chase version as well, with the lighter color gear. Yeah, so good, man! Oh my goodness! Yeah, these came out really nice. You guys are—you always outdo yourself. I I love this. Just the fact that you know somebody in my family or a friend or whomever decides to acquire these beautiful things you know even the fact that they can put it in up in, in the pose and everything that's really cool but the gear is just so spot on holy cow great job well it does help i want to thank you and everyone else when they do the reference shots in studio it helps to really capture the uh, exact uh entrance gear and the shape of the logos and stuff that's just super helpful on our end so thank you for doing that man anytime Especially if it's going to come out like this. <laughs> it's awesome. Keith, you previously had a figure in WWE Series 104. That was the basic style figure. And now in the Elite line, how does it feel to be getting not one, uh, but two versions of you at the same time? So um, <clears throat> in the previous line, I had two versions. And uh, a lot of fans would reach out to me and say, hey, I'm having a hard time finding this thing might be sold out or whatever. And now the fact that they're gonna have an opportunity at two more figures and be able to collect two different styles again, it's really cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing different people and whether they decide to have it with the hands, with normal hands or with the poses and which color they prefer. And, you know, uh, the, the, the wild goose hunt, if you will, of locating and tracking these things down. I can't wait to see it all happen, man. These, these things are sweet. I, gosh, I kind of want both for myself. 
Hopefully. Yeah. It's, it's funny. You mentioned what fans will do also, you know, a, a, a large portion of our community is of uh, action figure collectors uh, do a lot of really amazing photography with some of these uh, figures. Are you fans of that? Are, pardon me. Are you a fan of that photography? And uh, is there like a certain photo or visual that you'd like to see somebody set up uh, either from a, a match where you were wearing this gear or maybe like a dream match? Uh, so, yeah. Um, when it comes to a lot of, fan art. I'm actually a fan of all different styles. I've seen fans do remix of music. I've seen them do artwork by drawing. I've seen them write poetry. I've seen them uh, take these figures and as you say, different types of art. I've even seen someone make uh, almost like a, an animation where they just take pictures and a lot of the same motions in a slow route where they create almost an animated video. And that is probably the coolest thing I've ever seen because someone took a, a figure of myself and I want to say it was Adam Cole, maybe, sorry, Cole, um, where they made a video of the actual spirit bomb occurring in, in an animated fashion with the figures themselves. And it was such a cool thing to see. I didn't even know that was a thing until I saw that video and that's probably the thing that's blown my mind the most when it comes to action figures. Super cool. Very creative. Very cool. A lot of work and effort goes into, you know, both ends of this, not just the development side with the Mattel team. Uh, when fans get a hold of them, they put a lot of work into, into making those kinds of things happen too. So it's a great uh, kind of one, two punch of seeing some, some, some awesome stuff. Yeah. Super innovative. <laughs> So Keith, I gotta say, we're, we're honored to uh, bask in your glory here. And uh, I wanna say congrats on your limitless year becoming the first ever dual NXT uh, and NXT North American champ. And then moving up to the main roster on Raw, uh, what would you say is your number one goal on the main roster at this point? Uh, well, I mean, I think that I kind of made that pretty clear when I arrived in this jumped right into the mix of things and I think the goal anywhere that I go is to make statements but also elevate not just the people around me but championships and so the idea is to do my best to get my hands on one of the top championships and proceed to raise the prestige of said championship so that's a major goal and Whatever route it may take to get there, as I like to say, the grind is forever. Matter of fact, uh, it, it's something that I just kind of, I would say that it's like breathing for me. So very natural for me to just want to grind it out and, and do everything I can in my power to create opportunities and capitalize on them. Oh yeah, there's there's no question that you're I impactful with what you've been doing. Um, we see different forms of your gear here uh, as you make those statements and you make those impacts wherever you go in the WWE at this time. Do you ever think about your action figures when you're designing that gear and, and what could come from it? So yeah, in some cases, and I think that as my gear continues to change and little subtleties here and there, uh, I think I come up with more ideas that I am going to be hopefully able to uh, kind of involve and, and use as inspiration and gear going forward because uh, currently I'm in a very big kind of designing stage and trying to sort out exactly what's next for me and trying to get things okay because I have a few ideas that I'm absolutely in love with. And... Um, you know, we're going to see how the evolution comes along with that and, and how I'm able to uh, present that for the people and even in further figures. Because if, if it gets to be anything of what I have in mind, I think it can be something monumental, uh, even iconic. So we'll see what happens. That sounds great. It's exciting to, to look for that to come. Uh, do you have an action figure collection of your own? Uh, so I have bits and pieces. Um, I moved not long ago, so not everything's unpacked. But one that always stays with me, and it's because I think she's such a monster, and I have a 
limitless respect for what she's capable of in and out of the ring. This one is always all around me, which is Shayna Baszler, of course. Yeah. Uh, along with her, what used to be NXT Women's Championship. Uh, uh, and I have uh, the new Mia Yim that just hit recently. And I'm pretty sure uh, I have a few others of just associates that I have on display downstairs and like near the bottom of one of my bookcases. So uh, That's awesome. maybe one day I'll snap a picture and send it to you guys or something. Yeah, we'd like to see it. Uh, so if you have that type of collection now, were you collection, collecting WWE action figures growing up? Uh, yeah, but not like a collector collector. Mm -hmm. I was very much uh, get it, open it up and play with it. And then, you know, as years go by, my little brothers would steal it. And then who knows where they are now type of, <laughs> type of action figure holder. So yeah, for sure. Hey, there, there's two types of folks. There's the types that open and play, and there's the type that have them on the shelf. So we, we definitely understand that. We get that. Yeah. Uh, Steve and Bill, if, uh, we, I'd love to uh, get Keith's reaction to the rest of the figures that are in the Elite 82 set alongside him, uh, if, we could, if we could check those out, if we have them available. Yeah, yeah let's, let's take a look at some more figures from Elite 82. Oh, uh, oh wow. Brand new images here. Uh, Bill, talk us through these. I'll, I'll let you uh, give your insight on these exciting new figures. Sure. Uh, going from my screen left to right, we have uh, John Morrison, the, the return uh, version, which I actually have in hand right now. And the soft good jacket on this is mind blowing. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the amount of detailing. It um, looks awesome. Yeah, this one turned out spectacular. And then another feature, which I'm pretty proud of, is the. Um, the sunglasses and um, get that on camera. The sunglasses and bandana come as one piece. So when you put it on the figure, it looks uh, it's a seamless presentation. It's not like it's part of its oversized or I know it's probably not fitting very well right there. But oh, John, John. Um, I'm sure he'll be very happy with this one. That's really yeah. That one that one in particular turned out very well. Uh, the Finn Balor, the NXT return Finn Balor. My that one is a. Um, I think that one also turned out uh, pretty pretty well. My favorite aspect on that one is the, uh, you can't see in the photo here, but we have brand new uh, uh, pointers, fingers, Ooh. pointer hands with the with the uh, the thumb cock. Ah. Yeah, we've we've done this before with the with the uh, like a Hardy Boy style with the two fingers up and the the thumb raise. This one is the the pointing finger, but then the uh, the cock. You know, the, oh. The, the cock thumb and then also the new tattoo art on the uh on his left hand which i don't wow. know if you can see that well on camera with the detailing on this yeah i can it's it's pretty superb uh, i was yeah. amazed when i first saw the first sample on this like how they were able to replicate uh you know complex artwork that uh exactly alexa bliss uh, sorry sorry bill let, let me just pause just for a second there uh keith knowing that you're in the set with finn balor and there's some history there you feel like you have any unfinished business with him i mean not necessarily mr prince uh he's he shot his shot and <laughs> fell by the way son but I, i'd say he's doing quite well for himself right now so if anybody is feeling that there's unfinished business it might be him since I, obviously i i have ascended and, uh, you know, he, in a one-on-one -on -one match, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't managed to lay me down, so. <laughs> you never know. Maybe if he gets a couple of these figures, he can make it happen. <laughs> he makes a new, uh, an animated video of his own. <laughs> How dare you? You better not punch him. <laughs> uh, sorry, th sorry for the pause, Bill. Thank you. Uh, no worries. And then, uh, Alexa? Alexa Bliss, she is going to come the first ever uh, figure with the women's uh, tag title. So I know a lot of people have been wanting that belt. Uh, it'll be available on a brand new Alexa Bliss. And she also has uh, double jointed knees, which is new for Alexa. And uh, Jerry the King Lawler, uh, we're doing another Jerry the King, sort of back from like the 93 era when he had the, uh, the flat crown and the entrance cape and the uh, very elaborate uh, tights designs, which again, I'm going to show this on camera real quick. The fact that they're able to capture like that, like that fine of detail on the pants logos is, uh, it's astounding to me sometimes. You design something 
thinking it's, you know, if they can capture, you know, 75% of this on a figure, it's going to be a good figure. And then they capture it a hundred percent. Yeah. So good. Like, wow. And that cape, cape, that cape and the is soft good, uh, Yeah. The, the yeah, soft good cape on this is, uh, again, it's, it's, I mean, just look at the detailing on the back and the, the, the silver, the silver printing on this. It's beautiful. It's, uh, it's, it's, I mean, look at this. Yeah, it's hold on, Jerry. I'm saying that the work that they did on your figure is beautiful, not you. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't all right, <laughs> Keith. Knowing that uh, somebody like Jerry the King Lawler, who's just a, a pro wrestling legend at this point, like an icon beyond what most folks could even imagine, uh, can can have a look like this, and can just be. You, you can know who he is immediately when you see Jerry the King Lawler walk into a room with this type of look. You had alluded before to hoping to, can, to uh, evolve your gear to a way that you kind of become the same or are the same way. Is this kind of what you're talking about? Are you seeing yourself in line with, with folks like Jerry the King Lawler? I wouldn't say I'm in line right now, but the, the idea is to eventually have myself in a Position where I can someday also be considered a legend or a Hall of Famer or whatever it may be, I am committed to creating a legacy and a history and a growth and a progression and a drive and everything else required that makes me undeniable. And so, yes, absolutely, without question, that at some point I want to be in that line. Am I there right now? Absolutely not. <laughs> But my aim is to do that. That's awesome. That's great. Uh, it, it's it's so cool to hear you talk about that. Get your reactions on Elite Eighty Two. Uh, we do also have, I, I believe, Elite Eighty Three here. Is that right, uh, Steve and Bill? Uh, that we could possibly have a look at. We do. We do. Uh, <laughs> oh. Continued sneak peek. So here, you know, this is just a memory refresher. We, we revealed these back at Comic Con. So you have your your King Corbin. And your blue-haired Sasha that Banks. King Corbin cloak is, dude. All right, okay. <laughs> Corbin, you know, I. This is the one time I'm gonna give you props. All right, that that cloak is fire. Okay, that's that's all you get. Sasha, great. Right? Knowing like knowing that you're on a quest for gold like that is is a crown something you'd be looking to steal at one point. Yeah. Not so much, man. Right? <laughs> All that superficial nonsense. I'll be a king in my own right. I don't require other sweet... people to do such things. I'll just make them bow down, a... down to my willpower. You can have a sweet entrance cape, though. A, a cape might be a cool thing, man. That might be a cool thing. I don't think I can do that, though. I feel like I would be sweating just trying to get through the entrance with all of that material and fur. But man, it looks great. All right, so these these were this, the the you know memory refreshers. But moving on to some some new reveals. Oh, okay. Three, we've got Bill. Tell us about these. Sure, uh, sneak previews of uh, Edge, and he's going to be the uh, the chase in the assortment, sort of based off of his uh, 2020 return, and an updated Drew McIntyre. And just an FYI, the final figure in this way will have chest hair. The, the prototype just <coughs> doesn't, but we are adding the, uh, the chest hair to this figure. I guess he had, he had shaven at this point and then grew it out, right? In time for figure <laughs> release, right? Or it just didn't make the prototype image. But we'll, make sure it, we'll make sure it's on the final figure. Don't worry about that part. Wow, well, what you have is pretty freaking sweet, man. The edges are awesome. I love the different color combinations as well. And I, I literally just saw a comment today, um, you know, commending the the Ultimate Edition Edge and asking if we were doing the other gears. So to answer that question, here you are. We are doing the other return gears for Edge. Yeah, getting then, Edge back was a big deal. So it's yes. we're gonna make sure we celebrate it. Yes. So then we, we've got Dusty Rhodes, the American Dream. <laughs> Ah, see that right there? That just gave me goosebumps. So this one, we were fortunately able to have a sample in hand and get some photography done. But this is Dusty from uh, his Saturday night's main event appearance and those, those famous promo photos from Survivor Series uh, with the poncho and the red polka dots 
um, and you know, a whole host of other details here from that look. Bill, you want to talk through some of these things? Yeah, I have this this figure here, and uh, I've I've always been fascinated by Dusty Rhodes's hat with the chicken claw on it. You know, back when he used to wear it in the NWA, and then he wore it in WWE. So I've always wanted to sort of one day get this on a figure, and this was the perfect opportunity to do so. So this figure will come with the uh, the hat with the chicken claw and the poncho from that late uh, 1990 appearance when the yellow polka dots turned red. Uh, it's it's something we've uh, it's something I personally always wanted to get in the line at some point, and just trying to figure out like what's the best time and place to do it. And I think now is the time and place to do it. Heck yeah, man. This Keith, uh, touching yeah. base on, on Dusty real quick. Obviously, you've referenced him as one of the, the major influences in your career, even going so far as to say he's responsible for uh, Basket My Glory. Uh, do you think that seeing, seeing him as a, as a mentor almost, as, a, as an inspiration at that point, uh, what does it feel like to see him move from that mentor role and then evolve into uh, you know, a version of this action figure? Uh, with with this level of detail, uh, well, I mean, how does that feel? Dude, as I mentioned, like right away, seeing this has gave me goosebumps just because of what he means to me and the connection to him. Uh, I think it's just, you know, super touching and kind of that uh, a little emotional. But I, obviously, I can't wipe the smile off my face because I just think it's awesome. And I 100% will be getting this. So <laughs> you better believe that uh, I'm going to be having this poncho, this hat, and this chicken claw uh, in my house for certain. For certain. All right. That's great. Uh, Steve, anything else uh, here uh, to show off to Keith? Or Let's see what we have next. Oh, Ultimate Edition, of course. Ultimate Edition. Hey, this is uh, yeah, this is our premier collector line with full posability from entrance gear through, you know, in-ring action, double jointed elbows, swappable heads. Um, so here we're excited to show everybody the first images of the physical figure of the upcoming Ultimate Edition fiend. And I think he turned out fantastic. Bill, do you have any insights on, on this figure and the design process? Uh, I know people want fiend figures and uh, we like making fiend figures. Uh, and it was one of the, as far as when he came out the first time in the debut gear, uh, we were already working on ultimates and it was like, well, that's a no brainer. I mean, we're definitely going to make this. And I think we're definitely going to sell quite a few of these. Uh, it's uh, especially when he broke out the new, uh, the, the trademark title uh, as an accessory, like this thing, this thing is so much fun to, to, to play with when you get the sample and do the poses and, you know, just see all the different combinations you can do, you know, with the different, uh, the different heads, you know, posing it with, without the entrance jacket, you know, with the title, uh, doing all the trademark poses. This thing is, uh, you know, it's hard to top, you know, what we've done so far with the fiend because we've done some pretty good fiends so far, but you know, this is ultimate version and it really lives up to that moniker. And, and some things to note here, he does have the, the tongue out uh, swappable head for that additional expression. And he does have the Praying Hands logo on his singlet. Uh, I know a lot of collectors have been requesting that specifically. So that is present here on the Ultimate Edition figure. This, you guys, I mean, yes, you've done a lot of cool things with the Fiend, but this is really great. The championship is super detailed. His gloves look fantastic. It's it's almost like <laughs> actual feed is in a photo shoot right now. Like that's <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, that's exactly how we felt when we were posing him out for for the photo shoot. Uh, they just all those photos came out so realistic looking and so like full of expression, just like you know Bray Wyatt himself. So uh, really happy how this this particular figure turned out. As you should be, man. He's brilliant. Keith, knowing that you're on the, the main roster for WWE now, is, is The Fiend somebody that you feel like you would be ready to tangle with? Or are you, not, are, are you uh, trying to figure out more strategies for mind games before you get in, in there with somebody like that? Dude, I'm not really one for mind games necessarily. Um, 
if it gets to the point where I require that, then there's probably a little more strategizing I'd be doing. But in terms of my own motivation, is generally more so a, uh, the competition itself, the battle, the struggle, uh, the honor, which is something that I enjoy. It's, it's fighting until there's nothing left. I like challenging myself. So without question, the fiend is somebody I would fight. I don't think that there's much to a wrestling match with him because he's he's a different thing entirely, a different creature. And uh, I think the best thing for me is when it comes to me, mind games aren't really a thing that affect me very much. Either either I'm ready to go or I'm pissed and then I'm ready to go. So take your pick. <laughs> so So what you're saying is you're not afraid of him? <laughs> Absolutely not. All right. <laughs> uh, all right. That's, that's, uh, that's a, a, an awesome reveal. It's, it's great to get to talk to you about this and get into some of your goals, some of the strategy behind the way that you think about not just in the ring, uh, but the development of, of you, Keith Lee, outside of the ring. Uh, it's been awesome to have you with us at Ringside Fest at home. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us. It, it's, 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 it's an absolute pleasure. Hoping next year, maybe it's possible we'll have you at Ringside Fest next year if it's in person. Dude, if, if I am able and invited, I would absolutely be honored to show up and get to nerd out a little bit more over these, these figures, man. They're awesome. That'd be great. We'd love to have you and, and we'd love to do it. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us. So, Steve, we've taken a look at some Ultimate Edition figures. We've gotten some reactions. We're looking. We were just looking at the Fiend. Uh, what else do you have in store for us for the Ultimate Edition line? Well, we have what is probably the most anticipated Mattel WWE figure of all time, years in the making, finally showing you guys images oh. of Ultimate Edition Hollywood Hogan, uh, Bill. A lot of story behind this. Tell us about like bringing this figure home finally. Uh, it's a relief that this is finally making it to, uh, to market because I know obviously we worked on something uh, many years ago and at the last minute it had to be uh, to, um, you know, cut, so to speak, and not released. And then it actually, you know, I think maybe it's five years later, it turns out to be uh, – sort of a blessing in disguise that it happened so that when we can finally do, you know, an NWO version of Hollywood Hogan, it's like, it is the ultimate version. Like there, there's not a better version than this that probably will ever exist. If I'm being quite yeah. honest with you, yeah. um, it has the three interchangeable heads. It's got the uh, removable uh, bandana, the sunglasses, the boa uh, grip and fist hands with a new gloved hand mold and an NWO tear away shirt, which you can tear away at the front. So you can pose him, you know, tearing off the shirt. Uh, he's got the ultimate articulation and then added for 2021, we are adding butterfly joints to the shoulders uh, in the, you know, in the action figure vernacular. That means, you know, that we can do forward, you know, sort of back and forth rotation on the shoulders to get an even greater range of motion. You can do like a, you know, like a, a bear hug or, a, you know, if, you know, if you get, you, you take a blow and you like, you fall back with your arms back like that, you can do the posing like that. That's um, that's new for 2021, and that's something that, um, I, I, for one, I'm extremely excited to get that in the line. Just because we always want to be innovative with this with this uh, segment, we always want to be, you know, live up to the name Ultimate. Like these are Ultimate. Like these are not, you know, these are the best action figures on the market. And then and if they're the best action figures on the market, like what, um, what makes well, what 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 allows us to make that claim? And then continual innovation is is allows us to make that claim. So that's what we're doing. Uh, for um, uh, with this figure. So I'm really glad that we were able to uh, finally get this out. And I'm really glad we were able to do an all, you know, this ultimate version of a uh, Hollywood Hogan. Yeah. Ho Hollywood Hulk Hogan is, you know, obviously as, uh, as definitive as it gets for Hulk Hogan. And, and it's something that people were really anticipating uh, you and the team getting done. And uh, like you said, unfortunately it didn't happen. There are certainly, however, elements of that piece that, we didn't get to see come to fruition within this figure. Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, I think the overall look is, is the same because that was sort of like an iconic look. So we didn't want to change too much from that, but it was more like 
adding on to that, you know, sure. adding, you know, molded gloves, um, you know, that are you know, a little bit more accurate with the, the, the larger cuffs, like adding interchangeable heads. So it has, you can pose with more than one expression. Um, it's just making, you know, adding the articulation with the butterfly joints and you can see it pose with, you know, the toe articulation and the double jointed arms. So it was, like the overall aesthetics of the original figure we thought were good enough to be or appropriate to be retained, mm -hmm. but just, you know, making it better. Sure. Yeah. I, I do happen to have. Oh, the figure there it in is. hand. Yeah. And it's striking a classic. I got to get my head out of the way. It's classic Hollywood Hogan pose. Excellent. You can see the, the new, the new parts here that were developed for it. The, the new uh, torso, and the hands Bill mentioned, you know, and they have that that glove detail, but they also it doesn't it does not impede articulation at all. They were designed really well. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this as much as we enjoyed providing it to you, because there was a lot of love involved in getting this figure out to you guys, getting the Hulkster back into into the Mattel line. Yeah, I mean it's just incredible to see. I I don't want to go too far out onto a limb here because we've, we, we've seen a lot of great work come from your team with, with Hogan previously, but you know, I, as a, as somebody who the NWO as a wrestling fan had a really strong uh, effect on, I would, I would go as far as to say that this may be like the, the definitive Hulk Hogan to have in your collection. It, it really is. It's just the, it's, it's outstanding the level of detail that we've hit here. And I, if you want to, put a finger down on one Hulk Hogan. That's a, that's a must have Hulk Hogan. I, I would absolutely say this is it. So. Yeah. I'd say depending on the era you grew up in, it's 50, 50, it's this or the classic red and yellow, you know? Sure. Um, and to, to longtime fans like us, it, it could be both, you know, like I, I know that I, I need both represented in my collection. So, sure. so this Hogan was a must needed figure to make and to include in the line. And, we're beyond excited. It's, it's finally happened. Awesome. Uh, show me something else. I'm getting greedy now. How, how can, how can you show me something this good? And we stop here. Well, I mean, you know, Hulk is, is such an icon, but there are more icons who deserve ultimate edition figures and coming in 2021, we've got the Texas rattlesnake stone cold, oh. Steve Austin, joining the ultimate edition collection bill talk to us about this figure uh you can't have an ultimate wwe line we you know celebrating the biggest stars in wwe without having a stone called steve austin in it so uh this is going to be um again it's going to have the uh the new butterfly joints on the shoulder so we can his range of motion is going to be greater than before he's going to have a removable vest he will also have a soft good shirt it's not seen here uh, along with additional accessories that we're working on and uh, new heads. He's got the first ever sort of mocking laugh stone cold head. And then also the angry interview stone cold head. So um, one of the things that um, when I was playing with the, uh, the ultimate rock that we did uh, just the amount, you know, just how even like almost looked like the body language of a figure changed depending on the head on it. Uh, that's sort of like what, you know, what we're planning on with this figure and then the uh, interchangeable hands as well. Incredible. This yeah, is, I, I see a, oh, a future sorry. of a lot of action figure photography of, of, or animation going from that laughing head to suddenly the serious head. <laughs> it's like the real stone cold. <laughs> It is, it's, it's great to see it's it. I, I agree. I can't wait to see what folks can do with this, but uh, even just from a collector standpoint, um, the, the vest. Uh, so these are all the accessories that are included with this figure, correct? No, and there's, more. there's, there's more. Oh, there yeah, there's more. more. Yeah. This is just a sneak preview. Uh, okay. So we'll keep it, a, keep it as a surprise. Uh, yeah. We're not, we're not, no, we're not tipping all our cards. We're tipping right. like half of them. Fair enough. Fair enough. You're, you're tipping a big, the, you've, you've got like an ACE right here with stone cold. So I can yeah. only imagine what else it could look like. We're not showing uh, the river. <laughs> Bill said. Bill said he'll have a soft good shirt, and I guarantee you, right after this video goes up, people are going to say, "Ah, oh, no soft good shirt." <laughs> yeah, no. epic fail. No soft good shirt. <laughs> he will have a soft good shirt. All right, we have one more ultimate edition figure to tease 
for you guys. Uh, it is another uh, anticipated figure that we, we kind of give you a little glimpse of before, but for, for a couple of reasons had to get put on ice for a bit. So it is coming now. Woo! Ultimate oh. edition. It's your boy, Ric Flair. Look at coming that. in 2021. Yes, uh, I'm so I'm a very excited about this one. I know uh, Ringside had the exclusive Charlotte figure uh, right now. That uh, the reaction to that is spectacular. Uh, I'm blown away by what I read people saying. About, I I like the figure myself, but when I read some of the comments people are making, it's uh, it's it's really super gratifying to see people like you know the figure that much. So of course, you know Charlotte's Charlotte's dad is kind of you know a big deal as well, and you know deserves an ultimate. Uh, execution so we are going to do that with ultimate rick flair he's going to have the interchangeable heads including i think the first ever uh you know woo head which that's about as far as my voice will go <laughs> and then also new parts uh i don't know if you can see the interchangeable hands that hand does have the thumb tucked into the palm so he can do the uh the four horsemen hand signal amazing and he will have a soft good robe uh, and if you think it makes sense to have a robe that's similar to the uh charlotte ultimate robe uh you're thinking in the right direction awesome and of course the uh the wcw world heavyweight championship there uh which mm -hmm. he wouldn't be rick flair without for sure absolutely not he's got to have the big gold all right we do have one more reveal for you guys whoa whoa, whoa. Um, I, I thought you said that was the last one well, we have we, – it's Ringside Fest, right? That's true. So, it, it, ringside so, Fest at home. Here we are. We got something special thanks to you. Right? So we need to celebrate Ringside, ringsidecollectibles.com. So what better way to do that than to announce the next Ringside exclusive figure, which will be – Oh, I didn't know about this. What? Really? What? Uh-oh. Drum what? roll. The often requested I haven't WrestleMania 12 – Ultimate Warrior figure oh. with Duster, whoa, with swappable hands. Bill, tell us about this. Awesome yeah, it figure. also yeah. This is a, a also a brand new head sculpt to do the uh, the pose when he's looking out wow. to the crowd at WrestleMania 12. I have a sample of this in hand. It's actually a first sample. It's actually not final. We're actually sort of still working on this. We are improving this sample based off what you've seen here too. So take that into consideration too. Like. This is pretty great. It's going to be the final is going to be even better. Well, speaking uh, so, of improvement, pause there. The improve one of the improvements is going to be these wristbands wow. are going to be wow. uh, ac accurate to the event. Yeah, the first sample didn't have the um, <laughs> the wristbands with the the hanging fringe, so we made sure to make to you know that they added it for the final. This is the first uh, the first deco sample I have, and it's 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 a marvel. I mean, this is so cool. Uh, not only that he wore such a cool gear, but that we were able to replicate it uh, so well. I mean, wow. the detail on the back of this jacket, I mean, if you look at it, I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy that, like, the artwork is what it, what it was and the, that we were able to reproduce it, you know, on a, on a figure. You know, that's we work a, with such that's talented a, that, That's people. a soft good, right? It is a soft good jacket. I'm, I'm taking it off right now. Wow. I don't know if that's, yeah, it's, it's, it's spectacular. And the deco on the figure itself is like, there's not, you know, it's about as accurate as you can get. You know, he was not a, uh, he was not a plain Jane back in the day in terms of deco on the outfits. And we, we captured it all. It's uh, that is amazing. I was not expecting this. Not ex my brain's melting. <laughs> and, and Bill, we've also upgraded warrior in some other ways, right? Like with his tassels. Yeah, going forward, all uh, elite versions of Ultimate Warrior will have the tassels developed for Ultimate. So a little bit more accurate, and they allow for the posing. That's one of the nice things about Ultimate is that when you develop something you know, specifically for that skew, you can go ahead and use it later in the line as well. Sort of like, wow. you know, you know, you develop, you know, the improvements, you know, from Ultimates can be used elsewhere. It's, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you think like we do so many Ultimate Warriors, it's like what new, what new, uh, you know, what, what, what can we do new that's going to be, um, you know, new and spectacular? And, uh, you know, he doesn't disappoint. Bill, is this your Mona Lisa? Is this it? It's, one of them. Yeah, it's, it's in the museum. <laughs> I don't know if it's the Mona Lisa. 
because there's some stuff that um I mean, I'm still seeing stuff like when I, I develop it and, you know, think like this is going to look when I see this in a final figure, it's going to look good. And then when you get the first deco sample and you see it, it's like I'm still just I'm blown. Away. Like I, I'm very lucky. I work with extremely talented people on this line and just everyone involved. I sort of sometimes feel a little guilty getting uh, maybe like FaceTime credit for some of this stuff. But like the people I work with, the, the sculptors, the artists, you know, our development team, both in here and overseas. Uh, they make me look a lot smarter than I am. And a lot better than I am. So I want to make sure that it, they get as credit, as much credit as 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 they're due. It's still pretty incredible to see, though, at this point, consistently how many Ultimate Warriors you've worked on since the start of this line, and to just kind of see that uh, what we'll say is an ultimate evolution to this ringside exclusive is is pretty incredible. So, for sure, credit where credit's due, but let's uh, make some of that credit due to you also. Uh, great work. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bill McKenna, most uh, well-known and talented wrestling figure designer of all time, specializing <laughs> in Japanese women <laughs> wrestling figures, apparently. Um, that, that is, yeah, that's my one, that's one thing I will take uh, credit for is I am the, the greatest designer of Japanese women wrestling action figures. Excellent. It's ever been. Um, and <laughs> just speaking of credit, you know, one last thing to note here, the packaging, like the ringside exclusive packaging executions in my view have been off off the charts like unbelievable the cane the the firefly funhouse bray the upcoming walter figure all beyond exciting and, and this figure will be no different it will have similar packaging uh specifically geared towards this particular event wrestlemania 12 and ultimate warrior and when we show that um in a few months i think you're all, you're all going to be blown away by it um, because I sure was when I first saw it. I yeah, our packaging it. team just continues to hit home run after home run on uh, the ringside packaging. It's yeah. it's um, it's it's almost startling how good they are. That's You're awesome. You have to get at least two: one to keep in package and one to open. <laughs> you know, obviously, it's always been important to ringside to make sure that you know ringside exclusives are something special so for you uh, to make it be able to happen with a figure but also with the packaging team is just you know it's it's a home run each time so we appreciate it awesome i don't i don't know if, i don't know about you guys but I, I i feel like i'm full i don't know if i could take anymore so i've i've had enough to eat today uh maybe unless you have another like ringside exclusive for the next for next year and a year after that and the year after that and the year after that. Uh, nah, we're we still working on that. You can, you can say no. Yeah. <laughs> we got we got to save some excitement for for future ringside videos. Totally fair. Totally fair. And hopefully, uh, you know, by next ringside fest, uh, we'll be in person again. And uh, I, I just want to say how much I appreciate you guys. And it's it's a lot of fun to do this with you. It's a lot of fun to see what you've worked on and it's a lot of fun to show the folks uh, whose hands it'll be in uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah. Thanks so much, Tom. You guys are, are great. Yeah. You're great partners. You know, you're synonymous with wrestling figure collecting and it's always a pleasure to, to chat with you uh, and everybody from the ringside crew. Of course. I, I love talking to you guys. We're always just, you know, mind blown by the stuff that you have to show us. I, I can't believe what we saw today. Uh, I can't wait till the next time we get to see some awesome things. And I want to say thanks so much for joining us for Ringside Fest at Home. Thanks to you. Thanks to Liv Morgan. Thanks to Keith Lee. Uh, it's it's hopefully, like I said, it's it's not as uh, unfortunately a, as happy as it would be if we were able to be in person. But uh, I, I certainly think uh, we we've seen some really really big deals and some really great th great things this year. So thank you again. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's always fun. Thanks guys. So Steve, Bill, we took a close look at the ultimate edition uh, fiend Bray Wyatt figure before with Keith Lee. So I, I was wondering if uh, I hear that you possibly have a sample of that here. And I was wondering if we could just, you know, this is ringside fest at home. Let's do something special. Could we do a, a quick unboxing on camera? If you don't mind. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do let's it. Uh, here we go. An early sample of the ultimate edition fiend here. Check out the packaging, Look which looks unbelievable. It does. Shot at the back, that action figure photography up here on the top. Uh, great action shot below. Some of Robert Rudman's copy here. 
Uh, so, so let's sorry, this sorry Steve. So the, the top photo is an action figure photo, actually? That's right. Yes. That's right. So we took inspiration from everything we see from the community, from the, you know, the WWE Elite Squad online, all that stuff we see on Instagram. And we really wanted to celebrate that with these figures. And we, we do these action figure shots. Um, our, our creative packaging team handles them and they do an outstanding job. So, I mean, you, you just didn't even realize it was an action figure shot. So that's how incredible it came out. I totally did not. I thought we were looking at uh, the fiend in the flesh there. So that's very cool to hear and to know. So let's get this figure out of here and check him out. Look at this. This guy's a master on boxer. Look at him. Look at him go. All right. So here you have ultimate edition fiend. Obviously you see the ultimate edition torso articulation here, side to side, back to forth, back and forth, double jointed elbows. Look at the new boots. These boots are new, right, Bill, for the Ultimate yeah, Edition? Yeah, that's, that's brand new tooling for the boots there. And I don't know if you can tell in the light. It's a little hard to see because it's black on black, but he does have the praying hands on his singlet there. Might be tough to see there, but, but it is present. We can see it, yeah. Yep. Very, great detail. Uh, and let's pull some of these accessories out as well. Have your... Custom Fiend Championship title, mm -hmm. which is just unbelievable looking in person. Yeah, wow. You have your swappable head with tongue out expression. <laughs> of course, Ultimate Edition, we want to ensure you have complete posability um, to recreate everything, not just in-ring action, but your entrances as well. So you have your, your swappable arms, jacketed arms and coat uh, to recreate the Fiend's entrance. I'm just going to swap those parts out really quickly for you. Yeah. And, and Steve, while you're swapping those parts, thanks for doing that. Um, I know some folks out there are maybe a little skeptical on like the Ultimate Edition figures. Like, sure, they look great. And, uh, you know, sure, it's, it's something that folks may want in their collection. But people... Uh, those that maybe consider like the consistency of the elite line, explain to them why this really does like line up with the elite lines in such a way that it fits in perfectly. And anybody that's kind of on the fence about considering including the ultimate edition figures in their line show, can, can you explain to them as you do this, why there, there's that great value in this, uh, even just looking at it, you can tell, but we'd love to hear it from you. Yeah, well, Bill, chime in first, and then I'll I'll play off. Yeah, of whatever I'm gonna you say. say like based on like the pose that's that uh, that Steve is doing with the figure right now, like you couldn't you couldn't do that with an elite figure. You know, as as mu as much as we love the elite lines, and I love them too. Like, you know, with a twenty dollar price point, there are some limitations that uh, you that are just you know insurmountable. But with a you know with a higher price point, it gives you a little bit more freedom to do a little bit more tooling and accessories. So we can include you know. Uh, molded arms that are interchangeable so you can have the uh the, the possibility of uh of, of a fiend jacket that's got a lot of surface detail that uh when you pose it it's not gonna you can do uh you know the full range of posability with it which you know you couldn't do that on elites even so and the interchangeable heads you know changing expressions uh more joints um it's just it is it is. I mean, it is what it says. It's the ultimate version of, of, of that character. Yeah. And you, you know, you're getting, you're getting a guaranteed fully posable figure here to recreate every moment. Right. So previously some of these figures with detailed entrance gear, they'd be stuck in that, that static position while wearing their entrance coat or entrance mm -hmm. gear. Um, you have that posability, you know, and you also have that the double jointed elbows, which is, you know, really, really important for, for hitting a lot of signature poses and signature moves. Um, it's just something that you're not seeing in any other figure, really, like the swappable parts aspect, like as far as arms go and jacket go, you kind of don't mm -hmm. see that. You do see swappable heads occasionally, and you do occasionally see things like, you know, double jointed elbows on certain certain lines. Um, but really, it's like the complete package here for these figures. We're combining everything in one. Um, and soft goods, too, when appropriate. Like Warrior and Wave 1 had that amazing soft goods duster. 
Um, so, you know, whatever we need to do to robe, ex- right? Charlotte's robe. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, that one I have here somewhere and she's just like 10 out of 10 for a figure. Like, this is great. Obviously I've already unboxed her and she's kind of sloppily put back in there. But I mean, like what a, what a masterpiece of a figure she is. Um, so we we have that flexibility with ultimate edition now to like really deliver in a way like we have never before. And I can really, I promise you when we say like, we put that value into the figure, it's, it's an, it's an additional few bucks on top of what you would pay for an elite, but we put that money directly into the figure. Um, and I mean, look at Fiend, look at the deco alone is like incredibly detailed and, and that's expensive, you know? So we're, we're, we're putting it back in there and we're giving you your value for these $30 figures. For sure. It's, it's a great line. Um, what goes into the selection process for Ultimate Edition? Obviously, you, you consider the, the biggest names possible. And then also, I'm sure consideration is, is uh, the unique looks that, that, that uh, superstars could have. Uh, do you consider anything else there as, as you're kind of running down who might be a good fit for that line? It's, yeah, we you sort of skim off like the top of the top, so to speak, in terms of, you know, who, who would be considered uh, for an ultimate. And then trying to figure out a lot of it else is, um, is it a version that, uh, the, you know, that people have wanted for a long time, but, you know, some for some reason we never got to in the line. I knew when we did Ultimate Triple H, uh, for some reason it was a look that was, it was an iconic look. I mean, it was his first world championship run we never got to it until ultimate. So it kind of worked out really nicely where there was a circumstance where we're doing an ultimate triple H and we have, you know, one of his most meaningful attires to, uh, to exploit for the first time. So a lot of times you know, it'll work out like that. Um, Sometimes it's yeah. the ultimate version, like in our minds, like what do we think of and we'll use, we'll use Hulk as an example. Right. So when we think of like an ultimate version of what a Hulk Hogan figure should be, like you think of Hollywood, you know, that that's yeah, one of your yeah. top choices you're going to think of. So it's like th- this figure really represents, and obviously we showed the figure earlier, but there's some of the accessories. It really represents, you know, in our minds, what Hollywood Hulk Hogan should look like in action figure form. Um, so that also comes into play as well. And same thing for that Triple H. I feel like for a lot of people, that is the definitive Triple H with the HHH on his trunks. Definitely. They're, they're great selections and, and it makes a ton of sense why you would, you would consider it down those roads. So appreciate you guys showing us the fiend. Uh, love to see Hollywood Hogan this time. Also uh, some of the other uh, figures that we may get uh, may or may not get looks at as we move on here. Uh, it's, it's, it's really great to see the, the ultimate ultimate edition line kind of flourishing. So. Yeah. More to come. You know, we're just, we're just getting started here. We have a lot of exciting, uh, plans in our minds and in pencil um and as time goes by we're gonna reveal those to you and i hope you're as excited as we are to get to some of these and you know obviously we were we revealed uh a few here we're gonna keep going we know that there's top guys in mind who are perfect fits for for this line and chances are like if you guys are saying like oh my gosh how come such and such doesn't have an ultimate figure chances are we have something in mind for them and it's just a matter of time. So just like Hollywood is. Hogan here, um, more more iconic superstars, past and present, uh, coming to the Ultimate Edition line. Welcome, everyone, to Ringside Fest at Home, the second half. We're here with Liv Morgan. Can you guys believe it? Liv, how's it going? It's going great. I'm so excited to be here virtually. Awesome. Yeah, it's great to have you. You know, Ringside Collectibles has had Ringside Fest uh, going on. Oh, geez. We, we're, we're, we're way deep into the number of Ringside Fests we've had. Unfortunately, because of uh, everything going on in the world right now, we're not able to be together live, but we're pumped to bring uh, this look at these figures and, and get to talk to you. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be great. So, uh, I do want to take a couple minutes though and check in with you on on, on some questions and and uh, you know uh, just just talk to you about a few things before we jump into some of these new looks. At the okay. uh, so you're a chicken farmer, you're yeah. a sneakerhead, uh, and you're half of the riot, riot squad. We appreciate you coming. Uh, you've had a wild 2020. Uh, what's oh, it yeah. been like for you to team back up with Ruby? It's been great. Um, it's kind of like. 
we had so much work left to do that to be on my own, it just, the timing wasn't right, you know, and Ruby's my best friend and yeah. just in the ring outside of the ring. So to be with her, there's just like a certain comfort. There's, um, you know, we, we work so well together. So it's just fun just to be out there with someone that you truly enjoy and is your friend. So I'm having a great time and I'm enjoying it. That's awesome. Do the two of you have, have your eye on anybody direct that you'd like to take on at this point or oh, well, um, looking we to see are who welcome. comes at you? Yeah, no, we are totally welcome to any and all competitors, but we do have our sights set on those WWE tag team women's championships. And right now that um, happens to be Shayna and Nia. So our sights are definitely set on there, but we welcome anyone that wants to, you know, face the riot squad. Awesome. So I got to ask you, we did mention that you're a sneakerhead and, and a chicken farmer. How does your sneaker collection compare to your chicken collection? Oh my gosh. So my chicken, <laughs> my sneaker collection um, outdoes my chicken collection. My so chicken more, more sneakers than chickens. Far. Oh, I mean, I only have five chickens and oh. I have like two chicken farming shoes and they're both Crocs. <laughs> 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 and, but I have like tons and tons and tons of awesome Jordans, you know, but, um, yeah, I use Crocs for farming and then the Jordans are for everything else. <laughs> and the chickens never get into the Jordans, hopefully. Oh no, no. I've made that mistake once. I actually, I walked into the chicken coop, um, with Jordans on once and I did not know I stepped in poop. And <laughs> no. so I, not only did I pack those shoes in my bag, I wore them at TV and I had chicken doo doo all over the floor. <laughs> and I think Bianca Belair was like, uh, is that doo doo on your shoe? And I was like, oh. I was like, it totally is chicken poop. So I had to take care of that. But yeah, it was terrible. So I definitely, you know, I don't mix up shoes ever again. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, ho hopefully nobody important stepped in it after that. Oh, no, I went, I went outside. I started scraping my foot. You know, I was like, oh, gosh, <laughs> it's the only good. shoes I had that day. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it clean. Uh, yeah. So. As you know, uh, at Ringside Fest, it's all about wrestling action figures. We're with WrestlingFigures.com, Ringside Collectibles. Uh, we want to know right away, do you have your own WWE figure collection uh, beyond I have a Liv Morgan WWE mm -hmm. figure collection. <laughs> um, I have a Ruby Riot and a Sarah Logan. Um, no, you know, I don't, I don't collect anyone else except for me and my friends. <laughs> Keeping it to the Riot Squad, huh? Yeah, <laughs> we keep it close. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, any other like action figures or toys that, that you like to play with in that case? Um, Dolls maybe even? Oh, when I was younger, I mean, I loved, loved, loved Barbies when I was younger and action figures. I had a ton of wrestling action figures. I would keep in a couple of different black crates. I had like five black crates full to the top of different action figures from different eras. You know, you could tell just by the make, you know, this one was older. Um, but in current day, no, but I do collect um, any kind of, it sounds so like conceited, any kind of memorabilia I see, like, you know, let's live. <laughs> I want it. And I have, I have a couple of like, you know, um, pop figures that fans have made, just things like that, but nothing um, aside from that, really. Still pretty cool, you know, as long <laughs> yeah, as no, it's you totally, are, I you're not going to get any better than that. I think it's awesome. So I just like to, I like to make sure I keep it all. Cause when I'm, you know, an old woman, <laughs> I'd love to look back and remember, you know, how cool I was or how cool I thought I was. I'm sure you'll still be cool when you're old, but. Oh, that's the goal. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so your first ever figure was in elite 69. Uh, after yeah, you that saw was... that figure for the first time, how did you feel about that? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Um, as you know, a wrestler, it's like when you're in the video game or when you have your own action figure, those are two total, like, you know, major goals. And to have the action figure, it was amazing. Cause like I said, I played, I had crates full of them when I was little. So to have my own, it was so special to me. And also it was like the first ever Royal Rumble. And so that was that year, you know, so that just like lives on forever. Um, and I thought she was so cool. I thought it was such an awesome job well done it was so detailed and she looked better than me you know i was like thank you thank you thank you i loved i loved the little live <laughs> that's awesome uh, i'm, I'm going to throw it quickly to uh steve ozer and bill mckenna who are of course still on the line with us celebrating ringside fest uh steve and bill i i believe there's something you have to show 
Liv and, and to see if we can get some reactions from her on, on uh, some figures? Yeah, yeah. Well, you have uh, you have two figures so far. Yes. And we are excited to announce to you that you are soon to have a third figure. No way! Let me will... see her. Three's my favorite. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Coming in wow. 2021 to the Elite Collection, brand new in new gear. Liv Morgan action figure and, and Bill, why don't you have. why don't you tell Liv about this this new figure? Sure, the first uh, Elite Liv was a um, I believe it was a retailer exclusive. This one is going to be mainline, so this one's going to be available everywhere. Yeah, uh, based off of the gear from Royal Rumble 2020. Yeah. And so this, I'll hold it up to the camera. I actually got the first prototype shot of it just last week. Oh my uh, gosh. So this is, you can see there's a lot of new sculpting, a lot of new detail yes. on it. One uh, touch I'm really kind of happy with is it's going to be able to do the, uh, the L hand single. With the, <laughs> oh uh, yeah. so we, we sculpted a, a, a hand uh, specifically for the figure. That and is then so amazing. And then it's also going to come with the, um, a soft good robe from the, from the uh, vignettes, <laughs> from the rebirth of live vignettes. So you can put this no on the way. figure. I'll, I'll see if I can put this on now. No freaking way. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. Oh, the robe. No, she does not come with the robe. <laughs> we were having a hard time trying to figure out, like, what would be the best uh, accessory for the figure. That's so perfect. And at some point, it, it settled on. We should just do the robe from the, the, the Rebirth vignettes because it was, uh, it was they, were, they were really cool vignettes. Oh, thank you so much. That is so, I cannot believe. Oh my gosh. Thank you. The robe is the most perfect touch. I can't even explain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So here it is. The, uh, she is so pretty. Put the, the hood up or the hood oh down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's amazing. And I, think, I think this is the first ever wrestling action figure bathrobe accessory oh my god <laughs> I, I think so i think we're breaking new ground here that's even better i'm so excited oh my gosh i can't wait to have her thank you guys so much she's so good sorry i'm like so close to the screen now i'm just like <laughs> looking she's so good <gasps> the nails are even right i have those nails right now always i do one hand black one hand white and it's like even that is right Oh, wow. That's so good. Wow. I love that. We're so <laughs> glad you like it. Um, this is exciting. Yeah, this should be coming uh, in the first half of, of 2021. So be on the Yay. lookout. Oh, I definitely will be. I'll be watching. Love it. Oh, my gosh. All right. So we do we do have some additional 2021 super early sneak peeks, uh, okay. which, you know, we're going to show you and the viewers now. So feel free to, to react and, and chime in as you see these. Um, so looking ahead and Bill, you can speak to these. Sure. Ooh. So Seamus will be making his return to the elite line with the uh, updated head uh, with the necklace and not pictured. He also will have a soft good merch shirt. Ooh, as pale as ever. <laughs> and uh, Alistair Black, we will be... Uh, putting him with the uh, the really cool hooded robe he wore at this year's WrestleMania. Alistair Black is a, someone that uh, always yeah. uh, seems to sell very, very well. So uh, it's nice to get another another uh, crack at him in the elite line. Tattoos are so cool. The tattoos look so cool. How about yeah, that jacket, think... Liv? Could you ever see yourself uh, wearing anything like that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, he pulls it off and probably only he can pull that off. I'll leave that to him. What is that? Horns? So cool. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a, a term in the industry called, uh, and it's something that you and Alistair both share, like that quality, like your gear and your look is, is very toyetic. So we see oh, these looks, and we yay. we're like, we have to make that as an action figure. Yay! Thank you. <laughs> so that cool. actually, uh, before we move on, guys, Steve, that that makes me think of a quick question for Liv. Um, you know, you obviously, to, to Steve's point in being toyetic, you have one of the most unique looks for a superstar at this point. Do you think about the fact Aww. that this could eventually turn into an action figure as you figure out your looks? Um, that was something that I kind of kept in mind after the first action figure I saw. And I was just so blown away that I, I was like, um, 
how could I be the coolest action figure ever? You know, and it's something I've kept in mind. Like, I want to be the coolest action figure ever. What what can I do or, you know, what can I make distinct or add on that will add to this little action figure? So it's something I keep in mind. Um, and thank you for saying that. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. It's true. So <laughs> can't you. make up stuff in the action figure world. Everything's got to be correct. <laughs> yeah. So They'll call cool. us out for sure. <laughs> yeah, they will. All right. And moving on, we have two more sneak peeks here. Uh, two figures we're very excited to reveal. Bill, tell us about these. Sure. First ever carrying cross from uh, NXT. That will also come with the soft good jacket. Uh, that's another one that sort of his look is very, uh, very toyetic. A lot of, um, you know, any, t- any, any extensive tattooing people seem to really like on the figures. And Undertaker from the graveyard match. Uh, well, I'm sorry, the boneyard match. I might have to edit that. Um, uh, from this year's WrestleMania. With wow. the first two shovels, so you can smash it over another uh, action figure. Smash it across the back and the handle will fly Oh, off. that's awesome. And I like his little attachable bandana. Yeah, so Undertaker from this most recent WrestleMania. You know, the last time we saw him in WWE sporting this. Super cool look, um, and what a what a memorable match. So only fitting that that we got this out as part of the Elite Collection. Is that the first ever breakable shovel? I feel like I've never seen. It is. Yeah, this was sculpted specifically for this shovel. figure. Awesome. That's Good so catch, cool. Liv. Wow, action figure expert over here. Look at that. I I pay attention. I might not collect, but I pay attention. <laughs> she even knows her <laughs> accessories. Wow. <laughs> I had a, yeah, I had like a, a breakable table with a plant. I was like, wow, I was so blown away. <laughs> it was very riotous. So yeah, that, that, is- that wraps up our Elite Collection sneak peeks. Uh, we can move on to, I don't know if we want to break here or have more questions for Liv before this, but we have regular, <laughs> let's see what I, I do have one more question for Liv, uh, you know, just based on the, the idea of the Boneyard match, uh, you know, and now that those types of matches are, are we're seeing them more often and, and they're so impactful and, and people love seeing them. Could you see yourself as part of like kind of a more cinematic match? Totally. I live to be dramatic. Totally. Totally, 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 totally. I love it all. I love the concept. I love just some more artistic kind of view that has to deal with the match. Um, it's a whole different kind of cardio aspect and performance and, you know, um, athletic aspect behind it, but just, it really helps tell whatever story is being told. It just adds so much. I would love, love, love to be in a cinematic style match. That'd be awesome. Hopefully we'll get to see in one. Yeah. I'd love to do something weird and creepy. <laughs> moving on to wrestlemania we have some brand new first time reveals here at virtual ringside fest our wrestlemania basic figures uh, so these should be coming in stock really soon at ringside collectibles.com as you see here our That's four so figures cool. are WrestleMania basics andrade the fiend with jacket Drew McIntyre and Ricochet with new head sculpts on that Ricochet figure and Andrade figures. What do you guys think of these? Wow. I love them. Is that, is the Fiend head detachable or is that just on there? That is permanent on, on this particular one, but we do the, have an ultimate edition. Like that too? What's that? Is that the first one where the Fiend mask is just like, boom, he's like the Fiend action figure? This is uh, our second Fiend action figure, actually. Wow. That's so cool. The mask is so cool. It looks like so detailed and it's so little. I can't believe like it must be so hard. Yeah, that one. It's r- really great looks on all four uh, yeah. gentlemen here, but uh, definitely the fiend jumps out right away. Also to see. Sure looks uh, huge. Yeah, a new Drew McIntyre with that. Clearly with that body mold, he's got it all worked out right there. <laughs> Andrade's pants are awesome too. Sorry? I love Andrade's pants, like the black and white. I love that. Yeah, great style. Uh, and, and also Ricochet's physique, again, is like spot on right Probably there. Is uh, tattoos are accurate. So, Yeah, Bill, Bill and our other designers always ensure that Ricochet's abs are on point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <clears throat> moving on to WrestleMania Elites. Um, we, 
Yeah, exciting stuff. We showed uh, teases of these at, at Comic-Con this past July, but here they are in plastic form. Uh, the lineup includes the ninth wonder of the world, China from I WrestleMania 7. We've got Shawn Michaels uh, from WrestleMania 9. Goldberg from this past WrestleMania and Edge from WrestleMania when he faced Mick Foley. Uh, and also this is a build a figure wave. So for the first time ever, if you buy all these figures, you can build the first time in the line Paul Ellering. And not only do you get your classic Paul Ellering, but you have an, an additional head to create your modern Paul Ellering and a very special accessory, which I know Bill McKenna was excited to work on. Uh, tell us about this accessory, Bill. Uh, we are finally able to make a toy version of Rocco, the uh, mascot of the Legion of Doom, a uh, short-lived mascot of the Legion of Doom from 1992. Uh, I think when everyone saw the Road Warriors for the first time, they thought, you know, you know what this act really needs is a, is a mannequin puppet uh, to really put it over the top. So uh, they finally did it in 92, and now it's finally, some 28 years later, uh, in a toy version. That's awesome. Yeah. It was a so lot of fun cool. to work on. I'm glad they were able to, to figure out a way to make that gimmick finally work because I feel like it was struggling for a bit. Yeah, and then it was just, Rocco it was, came like, along it was and, bubbling. It was bubbling under yeah. and they're like, gosh, there's just one <laughs> yeah. more thing to get this, you know. Everything's wow. improved with a ventriloquist dummy, so. Yeah. I love Shawn Michaels' jacket so much. And I remember that China match in gear so well. Liv, were you a fan of China? Oh, totally, yes. Yeah, she she beat the boys, you know? <laughs> I was such a tomboy when I grew up. I was like, wow, you know, I had so many brothers. I thought she was the greatest, you know? She was so strong, so powerful. I was like amazed by her. Thinking about that and knowing that she's been an intercontinental champion, do you have those types of aspirations? Oh, I would totally love, I would totally love that. You know, if yeah. um, we did some intergender wrestling, I would be the first one. I want all the titles. I want to try for all the titles, you know, uh, maybe we'll see what happens, but yeah, you know, she, she did win that and it was just so impressive. And it was like the first time a woman had done that, you know? So it was just very like eye opening, like, Whoa, it was so cool. Yeah. Good luck. That'd be some, uh, some pretty wild gold uh, to see around your waist for sure. Finally. Well, Molly Holly also won the hardcore championship for a little bit of time. Yeah, Molly, Molly, what an icon. Maybe she'll she'll get a figure one day. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all awesome. right. Moving on, let's talk about Elite Two Packs. Oh. <laughs> Elite Two Packs going strong. So once again, we teased this back in July, but here you can see in plastic and soft goods glory the Elite Two Pack of Mr. T and Rowdy Roddy Piper from WrestleMania 2. And Bill, you knocked it out of the park with these, I have to say. Please tell us a little bit about, you know, your thoughts on these and designing these and whatnot. Sure. This one was a lot of fun to work on. Um, uh, obviously, when we got the rights to Mr. T last year, we were all very happy. We launched it with the Comic-Con item. And it's like, what do we follow up with with just with is just as spectacular as that launch? Uh, and of course, it was going to be the boxing match with Mr. T and Rowdy Roddy Piper. The interchangeable hands allows you for the boxing gloves that are like, you know, I would, you know, they're, they're perfect size. And when you put them on the figures, they just, they look so cool. When I first got the, the first uh, Jekyll sample of these and I put the boxing gloves on the figure, like I was having so much fun just like posing them and doing box sort of like what the, what they're up there in the image of them doing the box. And I really never do that when I get stuff, I usually just evaluate it for accuracy and then put it aside. But with these, I was playing with it, like, you know, for a significant period of time and just like, um, and uh, the face on that Piper just looks like a complete maniac, which, you know, at that time he was. So, yeah, this this one turned out, you know, you have a vision sometimes when you start to design something like how it's going to look. And this even this turned out even better than I thought it would. And I thought it would I thought it would be pretty good to begin with. And it turned out even better than I thought. They're so awesome. The first thing I noticed were the robes and then the gloves. I was going to say those gloves are so cool. I want to touch them. I wish I could just touch those <laughs> gloves. <laughs> It is. It's addicting once you once you get them in hand and, and start posing and playing with them with the so boxing cool. gloves. Bill, will the boxing gloves be able to swap with Lib's hands? So if she wants boxing gloves, you can use those. You know, boxing I have to check lip. the pin size. I have to check the pin size to make sure that the male and female hands are compatible. But uh, if they aren't, we can work on that. I would totally do a <laughs> boxing bathrobe Liv. 
Right? Perfect. Well, like, yeah, all you got to do is wear boxing gloves to the ring, and Bill can and... possibly make it happen. <laughs> and, and That's all it's noted. Noted. And shoot noted. reference. Yeah, and shoot reference of it in studio. That helps immensely with the boxing <laughs> Got it. Gloves. All right. Speaking of Elite Two Packs, we have uh, a sneak peek of the next Elite Two Pack, which is going Whoa. to feature Jeff Hardy versus Triple H uh, from the night that Jeff won the Intercontinental title on a SmackDown episode in 2001, Philadelphia. I was actually at that show, um, which is pretty cool to have this in action figure form now. Uh, Bill, what are your thoughts on, on designing these figures? This one was a lot of fun too. This I remember I wasn't there for this match, but I remember this uh, watching it at the time. Like this was a big deal. Like this is where like the Hardys sort of broke out from being like a tag team cult phenomena in the WWE to like, okay, these guys are major players in the, uh, you know, and they've been at that level ever since. Uh, and so this was a lot of fun to work on. It's not picture, but uh, Jeff Hardy has uh, spectacular soft goods on this too. I think we're going to save the reveal on that for a later date, but uh, trust me, they'll, they'll be worth the wait. They look awesome. That's yeah, I think every, yeah, preference. Think everyone's going to be excited. Triple H, who's, uh, whose side would you uh, be on in this case? If you were there in 2001 with Steve, who would you have been rooting for? I would be rooting for Jeff Hardy just because um, that's this, his style of wrestling. You know, he's always um, doing the TLC matches. He's very extreme. That's what initially drew me to wrestling. I was... Um, I really like that just like rugged rough aspect of it. So his fighting style, just his style, you know, I pull a lot of Jeff Hardy inspo for current live, <laughs> you know, now um, in the rise spot. So I would have definitely been cheering my little head off for Jeff Hardy, hoping that he'd win. What's it like live to, to have grown up with some of these, you know, superstars that are so iconic and they're still with the company now and now you get to work with them. Like, Oh gosh, just... it's so weird. It's, it's awesome. But also there's like certain people that, um, I like, I feel like I idolize too much. That it's like, I don't want to say hi to you or I don't want to know you, <laughs> you know, I just want to like know you as I do. <laughs> um, but, um, I've met Jeff Hardy. He's actually very, very, very nice. <laughs> um, and obviously Triple H, but like, you know, um, when Stone Cold comes around, I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> I'm like, I, you're just Stone Cold. I'll just stand over there. <laughs> <laughs> just, just watch out. If he hands you a beer can, you know what to do. So. Oh, I'm, I'm shotgunning it with him. I'm chugging it. But um, <laughs> yeah, he's just so legendary that I'm just like, I'll just look at him from afar. <laughs> Awesome. So Liv, we're running up on the clock here. We're at the end, the excuse me, the end of Ringside Fest at Home. Uh, so thankful Hello, that you could join us for this. I know it was a wild ride. We saw so many new figures today, including your own. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Liv Morgan, everyone. Uh, thank uh, you. Really appreciate you talking to us. Uh, we've also got Bill McKenna from Mattel and Steve Ozer here. Guys, thanks for everything you showed us today. It's It's been really awesome. And, and it's been great to be able to experience this even though we can't be in person thank you for having us again uh, i'm not gonna lie i missed the trip to new york this year but um you know, hopefully things will be better next year we can do it again in person invite me next year we, would you like to come i want to i'm coming if, if it can happen <laughs> we'll make it happen uh just totally, don't worry and until then keep them at bay all right <laughs> i will thank you Thanks so much, everybody. And invite me too, huh? If Liv's coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Let's all go. Uh, Steve, we're going to have to check the building capacity, but we'll see what we can do. Ah, uh, we can do all the work. I'll put the deck together, get the samples ready, and I'm not invited. <laughs> Just kidding. You'll be there. You'll be there. <laughs>